We're going to talk a little back girl right now. Look at that. James back Gordon girl. on the set. Back girl. Andrew, we look at these photos. J.K. Simmons can do no wrong. Pitch perfect looking commish here. I'm hoping he's commissioner, Gordon, because we talked about that. I, I sent you a t- I was watched playing the, was it the telltale, telltale t- games of Batman? And they're like, Lieutenant Gordon. I'm like, why is he always a lieutenant now? How did, <laughs> like, I understand, like, Nolan was like, we're going to, and now, you know, Matt Reeves is like, well, he's got to, he's got to earn it. Fine. But at some point, can we just, like, can he just be Commissioner Gordon? Like, he's just, just make him Commissioner Gordon. We're good. We're good to go. The animated <laughs> series, he's Commissioner Gordon. We just, anyway, so I look at this, I see Commissioner Gordon. But Andrew, um, we talked about this a little bit before. I look at these pictures and I think flashback. I think this is the commish, Michael Chiklis, and I think this is his wife, and I think this is a young Barbara Gordon. I think the purple hat kind of tells us it's a young Barbara Gordon. I think her Joker color wardrobe here also tells us it is Barbara Gordon. But you see these pictures. What do you think? I think... I feel pretty much the same way. If I had no idea who J.K. Simmons was and I didn't know that he existed and I was walking down the street and I saw him here like this, I would turn to whoever was near me and I would say, doesn't that guy look like Commissioner Gordon? Uh, so, like they're nailing the look of him. And you're right. That's definitely Barbara Gordon. That's young Barbara in the middle there with the hat. This is absolutely going to be some kind of flashback scene. What just makes me so happy is that they're finally, and, and this is not a knock against the Suicide Squad, and it's not a knock against Wonder Woman 1984, because I'd like to put those movies a lot. But what this does that makes me so happy that those two movies don't do is they're finally reminding us that DC has a shared universe too. Because, uh, my God, Warner Brothers just has all these toys and they don't play with them or they play with them one at a time. So you know how much I love Gotham City. It's my favorite DC character. Uh, I want them to really explore the interconnectivity of all these Gotham characters. And as excited as I am for the Batman, I know it's not part of this Gotham City. So it's nice to start to see these all come together and just intertwine the way that I like these stories to intertwine. So more, please, more of this. Yeah, I'm with you. I, 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 I don't mind when Wonder Woman two doesn't share the universe because there's, for me, there was no point to it in that. Like, it didn't make sense in that movie. It didn't need, doesn't need. You don't need to shoehorn something in there just to shoehorn it. But yeah. at the same time, there's a lot going on in in the DC universe. That can inter- that can connect, and I mean now it's taking the Flash movie, and um, we'll pro- I'll probably talk about this in another video where whether or not Batman Ben Affleck's Batman exists or not, we don't know. But Michael Keaton is he signed on for apparently at least three movies, so the Flash, Batgirl, and something we don't know. Mm-hmm. Um, there have been concerns that they are turning this Batgirl into Batman Beyond that storyline. Mm-hmm. They're getting rid of the Batman Beyond character and they're making a Batgirl Um, I know a lot of people have kind of felt negative about that because that's its own thing and I kind of get it but I also feel like if you're bringing in Michael Keaton as Batman he's 70 like there's not a whole lot Batman can do at that point it's and this back for me like when I see this I think JK Simmons looks fantastic here Um, let me see if I can show the I'm trying to show it on that there we go. J.K. Simmons looks fantastic here to me. I thought the Batgirl costume looked pitch perfect. Oh, like, yeah. oh, that's what Batgirl looked like. People are complaining. That's what Batgirl looks like to me. And I grew up with the Adam West Bat- Batman show, so whatever. But that's to me, this is what Batgirl looks like. I think that, that looks all fine. And if she's going to move into that Batman role, I'm okay with that. And, and it's exciting because there's that mural. I don't know if you saw it, but there's a mural of Batman, Michael Keenan's Batman, that's kind of war and torn and right beside him is robin which means a robin does exist in the michael oh, keaton so batman cool. universe which means that at this point in time robin would no longer be robin but nightwing would be roaming the streets somewhere yes. doing his thing which could lead us to a nightwing movie and i think i love man of steel and i love batman v superman i've gotten a lot of flack for these loves 
my whole like for the last 10 years but now people love but i love those movies the one thing i've always said though is as much as i love man of steel is it wasn't a movie that really felt like it was meant to create a universe you know it was like this is a standalone superman movie and they're like well we got to create a universe around it it's like well is that the universe you want and i think and people love the Snyderverse. I love the Snyderverse. I'm not going to go hashtagging it like a maniac and downvote all good movies just to prove some kind of weird point. But I'm loving what I'm seeing here. I'm loving J.K. Simmons. I'm loving this. Uh, I grew up with Michael Keaton. I mean, Adam West, Michael Keaton, Val Kilmer. But the only thing, Andrew, is kids today, do they care about Michael Keaton playing Batman? That's a great question. And I don't think... Most of them do. I have like some students who are, they're the exception, not the rule, who are on top of all this stuff. And they're like, wow, Michael Keaton, Batman. And they're like 11. Uh, but like I said, those are the exception, not the rule. But I don't think Warner Brothers planned it this way. Um, I'm assuming that because they have not proven to be good at planning things when it comes to DC. So I think this was just a happy accident in their favor. But what's coming out in spring, apparently, the Gotham Knights game. And the Gotham yeah. Knights game is going to make Batgirl, Nightwing, and Robin cool and put them in the spotlight for the first time really since Batman and Robin. I mean, yeah. when else have they been in the spotlight this much? So that is going to get people really excited for this movie who have not, maybe they've been on the fence, whatever. You're right. The costume got me excited too. Um, did they say... Has there been an announcement of like who the villain is in this movie, or is that still it's, hush -hush? Uh, yeah? It's Brandon Fraser as Firefly. As Fire, oh, that's right. Okay, he's Firefly. Okay, you can so, check out a video of him leaving a shop on fire. Ooh, all right. So we've yeah, got he is in an actor who is making a comeback because we haven't seen him in like twenty five years, and a villain we've never seen before who is a relatively like known Batman villain. So. All the pieces are there. I think this movie's going to be so much damn fun. Uh, I, from what I can gather, it's the first DCEU movie that's going to really let us explore Gotham, which is nice. And, but it, it's also an HBO Max movie. Yes. There have been rumors, though, that when Discovery buys a Warner Brothers, they might push it to the theater, but for now it's an HBO Max movie, which is confusing. Well, not confusing. I, I, it makes me think that they're looking for a higher quality film on their streaming service right off the get-go, like Wonder Woman 2, like Mortal Kombat, like, uh, like, like theater. Whether you like those movies or not, that's not the point. They are theatrical films that ended up being released on, on that. I, that's the only thing is like, well, are they going to cheapen out a little bit because of HBO Max? I don't actually think so. I think, to be honest with you, we're talking about Boba Fett and Star Wars and MCU, and they work that like the, the MCU, the theatrical MCU is already TV shows anyway. They're mm -hmm. just two hour, three hour endgame television shows that, that happen to be in the theater. That's all these are. So it makes sense for me that for this to be on HBO. If it makes the budget a little bit lower and they can give us more, but the quality is still there, I'm all for it as well because then you start tying it all together. And I think the one thing that we have to remember with Michael Keenan being Batman is, okay, the Bat flex stuff if he comes doesn't come back that might suck but you have michael keaton and you have pattinson and i think they they kind of will allow batman in this iteration of the dc universe to be uh, an older bruce wayne and let and let batgirl kind of take over because in this one here you have pattinson and then you leave the door open for him to come back and for them to do another solo movie with, you know, Seth, Seth Rogen as Batman. I don't know what, <laughs> but they, they have that, they have that there in their back pocket. So they don't have to worry about this one being young and about the kids not caring about Michael Keaton. Cause it's a different thing altogether. The new kids have Pattinson. Yeah. And the kids will, I mean, the kids are excited for flash and that's where we're getting Keaton. So he's going to be kind of, kind of wanted by the young audiences just through osmosis, I'd imagine. Like, wow, look at this cool old man Batman that they brought into the fold all of a sudden.